Hello! We're talking about the I in this video and we're talking about it for IGCSE. Well here is an I that's pretty undeniable. It's a the eye is probably our most important sense organ. It gives us the clearest picture of what is going on in the world around us. It is, of course, a very, very carefully crafted receptor, able to focus light from all sorts of distances. If you are in a dark room and you look down and then you look up at a light further away, your eye has done something the camera will not do in that sort of length of time. Uh, it has changed focus and it has changed uh, the way it responds to light intensity in record quick time. So it's a remarkable organ. Now to give us some background that we probably already know, the eye is the sense organ for detecting light and the brain receives impulses from the eye along the optic nerve. Uh, there's one optic nerve going from the back of each eye and it will interpret these impulses, impulses that we've spoken about already, electrical impulses, to form a picture. Now, of course, there isn't an actual picture in the brain, uh, but that is the way that the brain perceives the world. So our eye acts in a very similar way to a camera. It allows a controlled amount of light to enter the eye using the iris as our effector in this case. It has a light sensitive layer and focuses light onto that light sensitive layer. You can think of the retina as being very similar in function to the light sensitive cells at the back of a digital camera. So let's think about the exact parts of the eye. We'll label this up. This is a diagram that you have in your notes. And uh, this is the conjunctiva at the start. This is at the front of the eye. Now, the conjunctiva is nowhere near this actual thickness as represented here. It seems to be here or, uh, almost as thick as the next layer, the cornea. Uh, that is not true. Uh, however, it is there. And when you get conjunctivitis, it is this conjunctiva which gets infected and gives us our gummy eye. Mm -hmm. The cornea is the next layer in. Now this is a transparent layer of tissue which does most of the focusing of the light. Yes, the lens is going to be very important uh, and we've got uh, the chamber here uh, and the chamber here which will be uh, involved in the focusing but mainly the light is focused by the cornea. Indeed, if light is coming from a distance, all the focusing will be done by the cornea. The next level is the pupil. This pupil is simply the gap between the iris muscles. Remember the iris is a disc with a hole in the middle and that hole in the middle of it is the pupil. So we're really labeling something which is merely a hole. The lens is this smarty like object in the middle that is clear and transparent and in life is pretty squidgy. When you do an eye dissection you'll find that the lens because of the preservatives in it is hard as nails. But in reality it is much more flexible. This is the iris, as we say, it's a ring of muscles. And this chamber here, so if I just uh, sort of shade in this bit here, this whole chamber is filled with the aqueous humor. That is uh, a phrase that we need to remember. If you are struggling, you could remember it as being the runny funny. When you do an eye dissection, this is the bit that kind of squirts out at you as you cut through the cornea. Mm. Uh, the next layer in, these are the suspensory ligaments. The suspensory ligaments have the function of gripping onto the lens. And here we have the ciliary body and ciliary muscle in this area here and here. These are involved in contracting to change the shape of the lens. We're not going to talk about focusing and accommodation in this video here, but let's just say that the uh, ciliary body and muscle is involved in changing the shape of the lens in order to focus the light. Our next chamber in, behind the lens and the suspensory ligaments, is the vitreous humor. Now this is filled with a transparent jelly all the way through it. The sclera is the layer all the way around the outside of the eye. If you like, the whites of your eye. It's a tough, protective coat which keeps your eye protected from damage. The choroid is the next layer in. Now this is a dark layer at the back of the eye. This is not our light sensitive layer. What this does, it absorbs light which is already passed through the eye. So uh, if light comes in here, 
like this, it will pass across the retina. And no, that's this layer on the top here. Now, as it goes through the retina, it's going to be detected by the retina, and then we'll get electrical impulses generated here. They will be fed along to the optic nerve here. Let's get these labels up. Why not? And then, if it just went on to hit the sclera, it would be reflected back like that. Well, the choroid stops that reflection from happening, and therefore doesn't give you a confusing double image. You can see, if the light's coming in here, and then bounces back there, you'd get a slightly confusing double image. So then our next layer is the retina. This is our layer of light-sensitive cells, light-sensitive neurons. It contains rods and cones. Rods are more to the periphery here. So the rods will be out more in these parts of the eyeball. The cones are concentrated on this area here, the yellow spot, the fovea. There's a very high density of cones in the fovea. Cones are our cells which are sensitive to different colored lights. We have three different cones and they are sensitive to three different colors of light. Red, green and blue. The rods on the other hand, out in this region here, are not sensitive to different wavelengths of light. They are sensitive to very low levels of light. They will only give you a black and white picture, but they will give you it in a very low light intensity. Now you'll see that the rod distribution, as we can see, is either side of the yellow spot in the middle. When you are looking directly at something, light is falling on the yellow spot. And that's where these cones are. And now that's great for looking at things in normal light intensity, but if it is very dark, your cones are not that great at detecting light. So therefore, if you want to look at a star in a night sky, you are much better off looking slightly to the side of it. If you look slightly to the side of it, light from that star will fall not on the fovea where the cones are, but to slightly to the side of the fovea where your rods are, and therefore it will appear brighter. The blind spot is this region at the back of the eye where there are neither rods nor cones. Hence, it is called the blind spot. And we'll do a little experiment on the blind spot in a moment. The blind spot is there because that is the exit of the optic nerve. The retina is going to conduct electrical impulses from all over the inside of the globe of the eye to the optic nerve where those neurons exit the eye, there are no light sensitive cells and therefore light falling on there will simply not be detected. Finally, there are lots and lots of muscles uh, which surround the eye, these ones here as well, and these help move our eyes in the direction we want them to point. This is a sheet summarizing the functions that we've just talked about. So if you do want to pause at this point and have a look at these, do feel free. What I just want to do before we move on is do a little experiment to find our blind spot. Now I want you to sit quite close to your computer, uh, maybe 40 centimeters away. And I'm going to draw a nice big red dot in the screen here. I'm now going to move my cursor along to the right like this. Now you can see that perfectly well as I do that, but what I want you to do this time is with your face about 40 centimeters away from the computer screen, close your left eye and continue looking at the large red dot with your right eye. I'm now going to move the cursor to the right and at some point it will disappear. You will not be able to see it. So here we go and I'll tell you when mine has disappeared. There. I can no longer see the cursor. As far as my eyes are concerned, it has disappeared and has vanished into thin air. Of course, if I open the other eye, then I can see it. I hope that worked for you. Have a go yourself. We need to control the amount of light that enters the eye. Why so? Well, on the one hand, the sun is very, very damaging. It shines a lot of UV light, and UV light can be damaging, well, here, you can see that it is damaging to this t-shirt here. It has caused these pigments to fade and in the same way it will cause the pigments in your eye which detect light to fade. Here, just another little photo, these are some curtains you can see uh, where the light has come in through the window 
it has faded the curtains whereas down here uh, where it's been protected by the wall from the light you can see the colors are still much darker much closer to their original so bright light is very damaging for the eye and to counteract it in bright light the pupil becomes smaller and that prevents too much light from getting into the eye whereas in dim light we need to let more light into the eye otherwise we just won't be able to see very well and so the pupil gets larger to allow more light to enter here's a little picture of that happening on the left this is in a very bright light forgive the coloration but you can see in bright light the pupil is very very small whereas in dim light the pupil has got much much larger we call this larger pupil a dilated pupil and we call this smaller pupil a constricted pupil how does this happen well it's an example of a reflex action we have just as we had with our reflex arc a stimulus that is the light intensity we have receptors that is the retina we have a sensory neuron well our nerve impulses pass to the brain through the optic nerve via sensory neurons and the brain in this case does act to mediate the reflex now it's a reflex because it is still not a conscious action and happens automatically then electrical impulses are sent back from the brain via the optic nerve along motor neurons to the iris muscles and they will then adjust the diameter of the pupil as we say without the need for conscious thought we need to think about which muscles are involved in the iris there are two groups of muscles there are circular muscles indicated here by <laughs> these circles and then radial muscles like the spokes on a bike wheel in bright light we want to make the pupil narrower we wish to constrict the pupil but of course the pupil itself can't do anything it's just a gap it's a hole in the middle of a disc it must be the iris which causes the effect to narrow the pupil to constrict it the circular muscles contract as you contract a circle you will pull everything inwards so we get everything being pulled towards the center of the disc as these muscles contract and become shorter by contrast in dim light our circular muscles will relax to stop pulling the iris inwards and then the radial muscles contract these radial muscles here they will contract uh, and so they will pull everything back up this way therefore opening the pupil dilating it as we would say the pupil dilates in summary of the iris reflex our stimulus is the light intensity and you will need to be able to describe the iris reflex in terms of bright light and in terms of dim light the retina is our receptor and that sends nerve impulses or indeed electrical impulses along sensory neurons in the optic nerve to the brain and nerve impulses then return along the motor neurons in the optic nerve to the iris muscles be they circular or radial and you will have to remember which does which and that changes the size of the pupil dilated or constricted thank you here are some tutorial questions to accompany the video have a read of these questions re-watch the video and then try and answer the questions I hope that helps